Hi, I'm Professor Adrian Harris. I work at Oxford University and I'm in the Churchill Hospital where we have a clinical team funded by Cancer Research UK dedicated to conducting trials of new drugs to help patients uh, with cancer. So our research is based on how tumours grow and spread around the body. About 80% of cancer patients die because the cancer spread to other parts of the body. First of all, cancers need a new blood supply to grow, carry oxygen and nourishment to them. And through that new blood supply, the cancers can spread and grow in other parts of the body, where again they establish new blood supplies. The key question to us was, what makes the blood vessels grow? And if you block those blood vessels, can you stop cancers growing and spreading? And that's what we've been working on and what you've helped support. What we found is that uh, one of the main pathways is a protein called vascular and if you'll grow factor, many of us work on this as well. And blocking that can stop tumours growing. But unfortunately, they can be resistant to that in many cases. And what we found also is that when you reduce the blood supply and the oxygen, the tumours adapt and start using different metabolism to survive, in particular, fat metabolism. And understanding how that helps the cells survive uh, may also give us new therapeutic approaches. So really, we're taking a two-pronged attack discovering new ways to block the blood vessels, what makes them grow in the first place, and secondly, how do we stop the metabolic changes that help the cancers survive. As I was saying before, one of the problems with blocking the blood supply to tumours is, although some tumours will die, others can adapt to the low oxygen conditions there and survive. So it's very important to understand how cancer cells behave under low oxygen conditions, uh, what mechanisms they use to survive. And Dr. Esther Hammond is one of the leading researchers in this area of how tumours survive low oxygen and therefore we collaborate with her closely because the studies she does in the laboratory to understand these basic mechanisms we could then apply in the clinic. Uh, we have samples from our patients in trials that agree to donate so we can actually look at these pathways that are switched on when they're on the treatments I described. One of the things that we're very reliant on Cancer Research UK for funding is for pieces of equipment such as this. So this is a hypoxia chamber which allows us to mimic those conditions that Adrian was telling you about. So it allows us to grow human cancer cells in very low oxygen concentrations, just like they would actually be growing in in the human body. So because we can do this and mimic those conditions, we can then also add in things like chemotherapy and even radiotherapy to study the effects on real cancer cells. And of course, by studying those effects and learning more and more about how the cells respond in these really, truly physiological conditions, we can hope to improve treatment and obviously patient um, prognosis. In the current recession, this sort of funding that you can provide for us and help us continue is even more important. Uh, it's just a fantastic achievement and please keep, uh, keep up the effort.